What's up guys, today in this video I want to show you how to use that date time diff function. Now this is going to be very useful and I'm going to show you all the operators, all the unit specifiers at the end. I know those can get complicated, you don't always know what to put in the right place. So I'm going to show you everything you need to know about that date time diff function. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Ben Green, I'm the owner of Optimize IS and I help business owners probably just like you, help them do workflow automation, database implementation with a lot of tools like Airtable, Zapier, Asana, Slack, and some other things. So if you're curious about that, go check out the link in the description and request a consultation. But without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. All right, so now right into the video, I wanted to show you these two different date fields right here. First off, this is what we're starting with, the first date, which is, I believe, the created time of this of these fields. So yes, we have the created time, and then we also have date time two over here, which is just a randomly generated date field. So I don't exactly remember how we came up with that, but I think that was might have just already been in here. So we're going to insert a column to the right here and you want to come down here and click formula. Once you click formula, you just type in date time diff. So come down here, find date time diff. And I'm going to first explain how this function works. So as it says here, if you just click in like this area of it, it'll show you the operators and give you a little ex explanation. So it returns the difference between date times and specified units. So you get a specified days, weeks, months, milliseconds, seconds, hours, minutes, that kind of stuff. And you all you have to do is give it the two dates and then specify that. So you can see the first operator here is the from. The second one's the two, and then the last one's the units. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of that right now. So the first operator, you just pick your first date and time. So the first one we're gonna choose is date time one. I made this pretty simple here for you, date time one and date time two. And then the second one is date time two, obviously. So now we've done the easiest part. Now this last part is figuring out what you want in your units. So there's a great resource, I'll attach it in the description, but I'll sort of explain how to do this here first. So the resource is from Airtable as well. So if you just put one, not a, not a full one like that, but if you just put one little apostrophe kind of thing, and then you say hours, days, weeks, months, years, then this should work. So if we put hours and then click create field, yeah, you can see the number of hours between these two dates. So for some of these, I can see that it's giving me a lot of negatives. So I wanna see what happens if I switch date time one with date time two. So we'll click save there and it should, yeah, it should just give me basically the absolute value of that. So you can sort of play around with that, whether it's the from or the two, just think how many, do I wanna like track a positive amount of weeks in here? Like which one's gonna be first, which one's gonna be second, and then do that from there. So that is the amount of hours in between these two dates. Now you can do a lot of different things with this unit specifier. Obviously you're just gonna have the two dates in here and you can figure out what dates those are for you, but you can go all the way down to milliseconds. So the milliseconds between those two dates, obviously this is, this is a lot of milliseconds, but you can show the number of milliseconds between those two dates. Other unit specifiers you, you can go with, you can go with, so you can go with milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, quarters, and years. So one that most people don't usually think about is quarters. So quarters is like the quarter of a year. So if I type in quarters, if I spell that right. Yeah, so if I type in quarters, you can see the different, like how many quarters, obviously it's about three years for this one, two years for some of them, but it'll show you the amount of quarters between the dates. So that's really useful. So you can play around with this. I'll include that resource in the description below, but I hope this was really helpful and you now know how to use this date time diff function. And if you need help setting up your information systems, doing any workflow automation, database implementation, don't hesitate to reach out to me or someone on my team and we can help you out. Also throw a comment in the comments section if you have a question about anything in this video or if you have an idea for another video. So I hope this was really helpful. And without further ado, have a great day and keep watching more Airtable videos.